Good morning, friends. Would you be, are you surprised? It's another big day in the garden. Oh, yes it is. We're gonna do things with cattle panels today. Thank you to June's Journey for sponsoring today's video. Click the first link in the description below to download June's Journey for free. I just made Travis watch two videos from Jess over at Roots and Refuge and we've been taking all of her tips and tutorials on working with cattle panels or hog panels or whatever you can get a hold of in your garden. We're gonna see what happens today. We're gonna do some stuff. I have some kids out this morning at horseback riding lessons with another grown up taking them to that. I have other kids around the property doing other fun adventures. Some are also here. You know, you got a lot of kids. You got kids in lots of places. So just saying, it, it is a, a fun out day, nature day. Let's see what happens in the garden day around here. So we got the, the last of the wood chips here from this pile going along the pathways and then very exciting over here. Are you having fun up on that trailer? What? He's, you got a, wow, I see that toad. Oh, no, he's okay, he's not yuck, he's okay. He needs to go home to his mommy though. There you go, he'll go find his mommy. That's what I always tell my kids when we find a little frog or toad, let them find their mommy. So Travis picked up eight of these cattle panels the other day and we are gonna start figuring things out. And by going to Roots and Refuge yeah. Garden Trellising Vertical yeah. Gardening <laughs> School via yeah. YouTube, where we learn all the things, yeah. it looks like she's used these panels and then they've used a lot of tie wraps and tea post, which tie wraps and tea post are our life. So I've been joking with Travis, it's like we were made for this, right? We've been training, mm -hmm. we've been training, and now we're gonna do some arches. You know like a lot of things in life, you don't know the end from the beginning and things develop. So when we did our raised beds last summer, of course, we didn't think we were getting them in till fall because of the kitchen project, but we got them in late last spring and it was just a matter of getting them in. And I was counting last night, I think I have 18 and they're eight by four. And then I have some smaller ones and then we have the six green stalks and now we have, how big is our lasagna garden area? Big. He's, well, we'll, we'll all measure for you again today. So we have a lot to work with, and now we're getting to layering in these trellises. Dance around the barn, we're back. Whole point being, I don't think I have enough space between the raised beds to do the arches like how Jess has done, at least at her last property. Um, but I might, and we might be able to do one on like the outer side of each garden bed, and I can have onions and lettuce and other like cold weather type crops underneath because they wouldn't mind the shade, is that a thing? I don't know, but again, let's see what happens. Okay, so now what do we do? <laughs> Step one, remove the cattle panel from your trailer. So these were $38 a piece at our local farm store type co-op. They probably would have been more at our local tractor supply. Everything seems like double there. Okay, man with the plan. Yeah, yeah, you can't, you don't know, you don't need to get one. You wanna be like daddy and get one too, I know. Yeah, daddy's got it. He's seeing if he can bend it. How's this gonna work? Let's see, let's step back. Let's step back and see if daddy can bend it. Getting it to bend, is that a thing? Thing. Thing? <laughs> okay, he's doing it. Okay, so here's what it looks like up. Okay. I guess we get it over there and figure it out. I feel like we should play Rocky music, right? Do, do, do. We don't know how it's gonna really fit. We have to get it over here and it's not a easy light thing. I don't, okay, so let me see here. We wouldn't want it here and this may not work. What about something, let's see. Well, we have to test the space. We're gonna see. This like looks like a normal amount of space. We're eyeballing it. All right, so we have one here, and look at this. And Travis is six foot six, and he's standing. Now I don't know 
Will it be on the outside of the bed? Her, I mean, you can, you are allowed, this This is your farm, haha. -ha. You're allowed to set it up any way you want. She has hers with tie wraps in the bed, but it doesn't matter. I'm gonna plant along, like I'll do squash on either side or whatever climbing things we choose in, in the bed. It's got a T-post there. But I, I mean, if we had this big tall arch that even you could walk under, it's fine with me. Okay, friends, this is like hopes and dreams today. I am so excited and I'm so excited for the height. So these are cattle panels. I don't know, uh, these were 18 feet, 18 foot long cattle panels. We got eight of them and so exciting. So I have to keep holding this. Let's see if I can hold it with my shoulder. But I'm also thinking, uh, because there's a good amount of space in between these beds here. My chickens are talking, but what's new? I'm thinking of doing another one in this set of beds and then even down there in those set of beds. Uh, we have got onions here and broccoli over here uh, and some dinosaur kale down there and then garlic. And so I can still do squash or beans along the sides to go up these trellises. Look at us, we are homesteading and farming things. <laughs> So Travis is a tie wrap extraordinaire, and he says to tell you all that if you want tie wraps to last, get the UV protected ones. The sun will eat, eat through a lot of them. Okay, so the sun will eat through a lot of the other ones, so don't do that. You learned about tie wraps back at the apprentice school, right? Like lifelong, tie wraps are what our marriage is built on. <laughs> tie wraps for everything. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna, we'll move this and I'll put a post on each side. Okay. And then we'll put it back and tie wrap it. I love it. Okay, let's do it. Travis is so good at engineering things and definitely seeing things that I wouldn't even consider. I have things I would not even think would be a problem. <laughs> so he definitely measures twice and cuts once and thinks all these great thoughts for us. He's just, He's just moving it out of the way for a minute. Okay, so we have two T-posts that are up in the beds. So he removed the bolt, there's this little metal support in these metal raised beds. Um, he removed it just to get the fencing in and now he's putting that back on. And then he's doing the same over here, so he's just going to take that off temporarily. And then he'll put that back on. We have a nice tall arch, look at that, Travis is there with room to spare. Wow, we even have a little poem. That is great. So he is doing the tie wraps now. Tie wrap extraordinaire, and you got your little clipper. Nice. You do another one just to be sure, just cause yeah. you. And then do we do one around, down, yeah. around that bottom? Do wanna, you want me to do it? You wanna do it, you can do it. Okay, is this right? Yeah, go around this one. Do I go around this side too or yeah, just this yeah. side? I feel like the more the, the merrier. Good? Sure. Okay, but I don't really know how to use this tool. Just slide it in there. Yeah. Can't see what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm making it harder than it is, but. Nice. Did it. Here, blow on the tip of your gun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's adding a fourth one on there now. Tool. Oh, oh no. There we go. I made that much harder than it had to be. Okay. Okay, so very good. Our first official tie wrap T post. So, what were you showing me? So, you alternate them. That way, if this thing tries to roll, they're not all the same way. They won't all get loose at the same time. Let's see? So smart. See how this is over. That I one's see. under. This one's over. Okay. Never have to deal with it, but something easy you could do now. Sorry, I'm trying to get another tie wrap out of here. 
that uh, might help later. Mm -hmm. Those chickens are really talking. Well, we're just doing all kinds of warming up Travis to YouTube because he just said, can I show them a tie wrap trick? I'm like, sure. So he's, he's ran off to get something. So he's gonna show us something here with tie wraps. Thank you to June's Journey for sponsoring today's video. Click the first link in the description below to download June's Journey for free. June's Journey is an unfolding hidden object mystery game. You get to find beautiful objects as the mystery story continues to unfold. You have the opportunity to craft and update the beautiful island as well as the mystery mansion. I like to play June's Journey after a busy day of gardening. When I finally get my mama shower, I'm so thankful when that happens, and I'm able to sit in my kitchen chair even for just a few minutes, bathrobe in full force, towel on the head, that's okay. Be sure to click the first link in the description below to download June's Journey for free. June's Journey is available for free on iOS and Android devices and even for PC through Facebook games. This hidden object game takes you back in time to a 1920s mystery with a creative set of characters, with June finding herself in many sticky situations as the clues unfold. Thank you again to June's Journey for sponsoring today's video. Click the first link in the description below to download June's Journey for free. So the gun does a good job of making them not sharp. Uh-huh. If you just cut them with some dikes, they'll leave a sharp edge. Okay. And that'll cut your arm when you walk through. Yeah, or kids run through. What you can do is you grab them with some side cutters and twist them off. There we go. And, and that leaves a soft edge, it won't cut you. Okay, so if you don't have one of these. Yeah, don't, just cut them with dikes. Don't cut them with dikes. And leave a sharp, razor sharp edge. Okay, that's important. That'd be my shoulder. Yeah. So there's Travis, putting it on. And what's that tool called? These are just side cutters. Side cutters. So you just grab it, and just twist it. Nice. It leaves a soft edge and won't cut you. Well, we appreciate that. That's good. Nice. So we're doing like four or five of these tie wraps on each one. Yeah. Good. Okay. Lots of room. So what, you think we got a seven foot tall art bend there? Yeah, seven and a half. Seven and a half. Okay. So here's how this arch is looking. He's getting ready to do the other ones. Exciting. So we're going to do this row and then we're going to skip this row. And then I wanted to do it up here, down this row. And don't we all wish that driving in T-Post <laughs> could be this fast, right? But thank goodness he's got the arm strength and muscle to get those in for us. And here I am being a big helper, just walking some T-Post to some other areas. Definitely a big team effort on this day for sure. Okay, so now all the T-posts are in for these first six arches. Again, do, did I tell you I'm excited? I am excited. Look at what we have here. Our first little strawberries. Oh, and there's more. So fun. You know, I had a mystery on what happened to some of my strawberry plants, and it's like every day. When I come out here, I see a little more. So these, look, it's like two that got dug up. And we, we did have a goats in the garden saga. They did get out a couple times. And uh, yeah, I think, I think it was goats that pulled up some of the strawberries. And when I, last night I found two more, and I just dug a hole and put them in there. I mean, I never know what'll heal itself and come back later but we do have there's that sage is looking nice and there's another little strawberry coming up so i'm hopeful so travis is taking a break and we'll let him because i'm not the one driving all these t-post in but i want to look at my seeds because the big things i'm thinking are beans so many bean varieties and squash as far as vining things to plant along the sides of these raised beds. This is my little garden box that I'm <laughs> hauling out, hauling out every day. He's going for another one now. Okay, he's working on another one. Okay, we have two up, up there and there. Now we're gonna do the middle one. 
Okay, we're back inside now for just a little lunch break to put Tobin down for his nap. Got the incubator out. Let me show you what came. So we ordered hatching eggs for these American, I believe you say, I want to say Brees, but I believe you say Bress. This is from Bress Farms for the American Bress chickens. So look what came. Yay. We got our two dozen hatching eggs to hatch our own. And I'm going to set the incubator up right out here on the kitchen counter, right about where Mr. Rooster hangs out. Just because if we see it every day, it'll, it'll be good for me keeping track of it as far as making sure the humidity's right and all of those things you keep an eye on. It's not too hard to hatch chicks from an incubator. Don't worry, we'll get back to the garden here soon. Like I said, just a little lunch break, but a lunch break to get this incubator going. So I will get it going and we'll put the eggs in a little later this afternoon. They should be fine. I believe it's, let's see, when I've gotten hatching eggs from a local friend of mine, last year I did two rounds in the incubator and I believe they're good like three to seven days. I think the the rate goes down a little bit every day. But anyway, I have to have this incubator run just a little bit, make sure everything's set up right, and then we'll get those eggs in. The reason I wanted to do this particular breed of birds, I learned about this like all good things on YouTube over on Living Traditions Homestead. They had a video, I believe last year, about this particular breed of chickens and how they this breed is fantastic for dual purpose, for both eggs and for meat. Now also, those are my chicken eggs, Trev. That's not for you. He's looking to see if it's a car part. <laughs> not that exciting for you. Anyway, um, there are other more common dual purpose birds like the buffs or the barred rocks. Those are just fine. This particular American breast breed they grow out faster for meat, but if you keep them longer term, they still lay 250 or so eggs a year, which is a great egg laying rate for chickens. I say, it's not normal for chickens to lay every single day of the year uh, or to lay year round, at least where I live. So 250, uh, so 250 eggs a year are great. Now I think what I'm gonna do because I have a barnyard flock with all kinds of breeds and I was thinking about the logistics because I want these birds to stay pure, <laughs> you know, with their breed and I wanna be able to also raise them for meat and for eggs. I was thinking how I'm gonna handle this. So right now I'm just gonna get them hatched and you know, I mean, we, we could have a dozen roosters. They could all be roosters. We could only get two hens. I, who knows how this is gonna go. But I think long term what I will do is the current roosters that we have will be processed when we process in July. And my roosters will now be these American breast roosters. Is that the way to do that? And then that way, any eggs, yeah, I think that's fine. All the eggs are from an American breast rooster, which we're eating the eggs. But when I want to save eggs for hatching, I would have to separate those American breast hens just for a few days to get the eggs that I would need. Like if I wanted to do a load of only American breasts more in the incubator. Yeah, so there's a way around it. I do, my other friend, I know I'm talking way too much about chickens now. It's a chicken lunchtime break, but now I'm all excited to talk about chickens, right? Uh, my other friend locally who also has this breed, she keeps her flock separate and I'm not sure how that would work on our little homestead here. We'll see. I'm gonna hatch them first and we'll work through that. Also note, with any of your equipment, bread machines, KitchenAid mixers, or even an incubator, if you don't have your little handbook anymore that came with it, I Google for those and they're usually online for free. Like I have the Nurture Right 360, oh, it just flipped on us, um, incubator. I don't know where that book is, but I Google it. I have the PDF. I text it to myself. I should probably email it to myself. I could always search for it later. For some reason, it wasn't available online. And I was just going over the exact temperatures and different specifications I needed to set up to get this incubator ready to go. So before putting the eggs in, it's going to run for about four to five hours. 
uh, we're going to make sure that the humidity is it's got to be between 45 and 55 or maybe it was 48 i'll look at my book in a minute but certain humidity it's got to achieve and then it needs to be at 99.5 so we will check in on that we got to have the little door half open and have the first little water pot full okay i have been inside lunch break in with the kids but he got more arches done for us oh they're looking so nice okay so we have four there there and there there yeah just just the best things ever look at this we are we are going to grow so many things up these trellises i am excited I'm so excited and they're so nice and tall that I was worried that um, just that they wouldn't be tall enough <laughs> for Travis to walk under and that's definitely not a problem. So he's got two more to do. He has to take breaks in between them because, you know, slamming those T-posts and all that uh, give the man a break, right? But I'm going to work on getting some more seeds planted. Last night I did carrots in between these onions in both beds. Uh, we also did nasturtiums. You can see probably my last video. We did a bunch more seeds in these beds. I did a lot of lettuce in that bed and that bed. And all of those things are just fine, even with these arches, because what's gonna grow up the arches is not going to take up a lot of room. So I'm probably going to do um, arch-wise, maybe we'll do different squashes up those, and then maybe we'll focus on different beans going up these. But even before I start planting for the arches, I want to do more carrots, just basically carrots within all these onions, a whole lot. Um, so many kids are excited about growing their own carrots. I'm going to keep on the carrot train. My carrots last year, they, I mean, they were just super small, you know, but what do you do other than keep trying, keep going? Maybe they'll like the compost in here this year, uh, this year's compost, and that'll be good. Uh, also, I want to do a lot of radishes, and radishes are quicker, and I can do more um, succession planting with that. And then we have these whole beds. Like, I have some dinosaur kale here, uh, but I have a lot of room to get things interplanted in these beds. This one really has nothing. That one also. So, lots of seeds can go in all around here. And I still have, I have two flats of tomatoes and a flat of peppers that I need to get in today too. Okay, I was just going through and making my tomato plans, what's determinate and what's indeterminate. So this Lemon Boy tomato, I didn't get too many of these though. Um, these are indeterminate. So these were over here. And then these, Mountain Fresh, these are determinate which just means they're going to grow to a certain point, they're going to give a certain amount of fruit, and then they're going to be done. Um, and I just was grabbing the flats that the John Henry General Store had available the other day. And then over here, these paste tomatoes didn't say. So I went to Google University and it said that most paste tomatoes are determinate, but I was reading Amish paste tomatoes are indeterminate. So I definitely want to do all kinds of tomatoes, but knowing what these are just helps me in planting them today and then we have this these flats of peppers here also so i am going through here and making rows to do either carrot seeds or radish seeds in this bed i believe i'm doing carrot seeds now so much gardening learning <laughs> so much learning in the garden is happening already a few of you told me that you mix sand with these small little seeds. So for your carrots or for your radishes or for your lettuce, the sand helps space out the seeds within the garden. That is so genius. I try to just only get a little in my hands and force myself to spread them <laughs> over those long roll rows. I'm sure that I have many that are just too bunched up as it is i have gone ahead and ordered some of those pelleted seeds from johnny seeds that i've heard about and we will give those a try also so i just said wow this is what love looks like so we've got six we didn't even know we didn't even know when we started this morning what we were getting and now we have six garden arches i love it i cannot wait to plant seeds and do things with those arches. I'm happy even looking at them. Look at that, isn't that happiness? I'm so excited. 
and we got more carrots planted and I figured out what my tomatoes are so I can make some plans with those. And so now I'm doing the other side of this raised bed and I am making more little rows for more carrots and radishes. We're just continuing to go to town with these, but we'll see. I'm gonna test, as I said, the pelleted seeds also, see how those work for me. And I definitely wanna try several of the tricks that you guys have shared with me in the comments about sprinkling in a little sand in my handful as well. So we got a bunch of carrots in. I just went to get my, my bag of beans and I believe we are gonna just do some Kentucky Wonder pole beans, good old reliable pole beans here along this first trellis that I'm planting on. So I get the Kentucky Wonder beans going. We also plant sugar snap peas. We do a good variety of different climbing pole beans on the arches, as well as as I work in each bed, I'm trying to continue to do rows of carrots or radishes where it makes sense. I was not successful on growing carrots last year, but you know, this, this could be my year where we could learn more of what not to do. Now I do plan to also plant carrots and radishes in my lasagna garden. So not just the raised beds. We'll see if that gets going. My hopes and dreams right now are where I have my indeterminate tomatoes planting, where future Jamerel has those planted, is that underneath my indeterminate tomatoes, I'm going to plant basil and lettuce and carrots and radishes underneath since there'll be room there. And we will test to see how the carrots and radishes do in the lasagna garden versus in the raised beds for me. I could be doing everything backwards and wrong, but we're certainly giving it a good try here. So I'm just sticking my hand in underneath these panels and every couple inches here, I'm planting another pole bean to get going up these arches. I thought this was a great first layer to go. Now, in addition to the pole beans, I'm having some of the panels where I'm planting different melons, like butternut squash and other climbing winter squashes. Okay, so with these new arches on the two that are down yonder there, those are all the Kentucky Wonder Beans. And then this arch that we're right up here, about half of this one is Kentucky Wonder. The other half is from Seeds from Generations, their heirloom sugar snap peas. And then this whole row here is sugar snap peas. Also, so I remember what I planted where, yay. All right, so we've done, again, to review, I've done carrots, 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 lettuce, lettuce, so about three and a half beds with carrots and two beds with lettuce. And of course we've done our climbing beans and peas along these first through three arches. So right now, I'm go I was looking through my seeds, thinking about where, where I wanna go next with this. Where inspiration is striking. Doesn't matter, just so it all gets planted. So. I was looking at my bush beans, switching a little bit here, um, and thinking about where I want to get bush beans planted. And I was just reading about intercropping with strawberries. Yes, I can do beans with strawberries, and the beans are supposed to help replenish nitrogen, which is good for the strawberry plants. Just again, a little Google Gardening University. Right, let's do this in both of my strawberry beds here. I'm going to do bush beans. And then I think some of my beds down at the other end where I don't have anything yet, we'll do those with bush beans as well. I know we have 90 different planting projects that need to happen. My goal is it's 427. I'm just going to keep getting seeds in the ground until five. At five, I'm going to then take the next hour getting my tomato plants and peppers that I bought probably four or five days ago. I've just been watering them every day. They need to get in the ground. I'm gonna take that next hour to get them here in the lasagna garden so they can at least get started living their best life. That will be as far as I can get for today because I have a kid activity this evening and I need to get the compost off me before I go. So let's get going at trying to take the next 30 minutes and just get as many bush beans in the ground as possible. Go, 
And the bush beans that I'm doing, I've got the top notch golden wax bean. I have several, kids are having a real fun time here in the woods. Uh, golden wax bean, I have four of those, five of those packs. Then I have, I did these last year too, the blue lake bush bean. And the bush bean just means that it's gonna grow like a little bush. I don't know, can you even hear me? There's so much fun being had and so much dirt. They're playing like dust bowl games over there. Um, and then the royal burgundy bean, which I've never grown before. So these will all grow like little bushes and that will be fun. And we, I have more climbing beans left too. And of course, mentioning the lasagna garden again, we can do more beans over here also, but let's get to bush bean time. So I sure hope that we love the top notch golden wax bean. I know they look beautiful in canning jars and I do several beds of them. <laughs> so I will learn to, or I'll have a crack at growing them for this year and also preserving them. Hopefully we get a decent amount and we are able to have some beautiful jars full of them and we're able to use them and hopefully a good percentage of me and my people enjoy them. I'm planting those in with this second bed of strawberries and I know several of you suggested for me to get one of those garden kneeler seats. I have ordered that and I also got, I don't know, this other kind of garden seat that almost was like on a swivel made me happy so the seats and the comfort that's on the way makes me happy and the first garden seat the seat can actually raise up or down so i could either sit on it or i could kneel on it and after several days in the garden i definitely mama definitely needed it now my back is not hurting my neck is not hurting it's just obviously being down on my knees so we are going to get those seats and put them in practice and it'll be real good all right so this first strawberry bed has the top notch golden wax beautiful yellow bean that's supposed to be great for canning I just asked one kiddo to bring me my plastic garden stakes that I can write on with marker because really what I need to do is draw our garden and write where everything's being planted. I don't have time for that right now. I do have this video though, yay. But if I could at least get some little reminder sticks in each one, like it's obvious onions are down there, but if I can remind myself there's lettuce and lettuce and carrots and carrots and beans and beans, it'll... I, I feel like it'll be helpful <laughs> while things come up to remember what I put where. So I realized about halfway through doing the second bed of the golden wax beans. I really should be using my seating square. I'm sure you're saying this to me through your TV. It says to space these six to eight inches apart and I'm just eyeballing them. But even though I'm eyeballing the six to eight inches, I probably should be doing proper rows. So we'll get that right. We, we got lots more beds to practice on. I think it's all gonna be just fine. It's all gonna grow up just fine. It's gonna give us the and my gardener top-notch golden wax beans and they're gonna look beautiful canned and ho hopefully we like them right we're trying out things I like beans in all forms so anyway I have some hope so I've got about two more minutes left during my last focus seed starting time before I'm gonna get these tomatoes and peppers in the ground and I'm gonna spend that time just writing some labels around to help us remember what is where I ordered these labels in bulk on Amazon and so I'm not labeling everything in each bed because there are at least things that are obviously strawberries or obviously onions or I can see where the lettuce is. But I'm labeling more where I've direct sown seeds. So I know when I see seeds popping up that they are my bush beans or my carrots or my other things I've planted. Okay, so I didn't do a thorough marking job but I did a just good enough marking job I think just to help me remember that in this strawberry bed, I did the yellow wax beans, in this strawberry bed, yellow wax beans, and then a little mark for carrots and carrots, and then the Kentucky Wonder arches, and the sugar snap pea arches, and then the beds that also have lettuce in it. 
and that's just as far as we're getting today with the seed planting. I feel like it's gonna take me a good two weeks to work through all the seeds that I can sow now, plus getting plants that are already started in the lasagna garden, and then eventually getting seeds started there. I mean, maybe it won't take me two weeks just for the seeds. It's a lot, it's a lot getting the garden in, and then of course watering and maintaining it as we go. But every day we're getting a little more done. So now let's work on getting the tomatoes and peppers in and see if we can get those in or see as f how, how far can we get. My head is telling me, sure you can do all that in an hour, but the reality might be we don't even finish a flat of tomatoes in an hour. So who could know it? Let's give it a shot. So I'm carrying my different flats of tomatoes over here on the edge of my lasagna garden. My kitties are gonna protect them for me. <laughs> and uh, we are going to start actually getting them planted in the ground. I plan to have several rows of the determinate tomatoes that we will do mainly tomato cages or staking for. Then we'll do the indeterminate tomatoes around the edge of the garden. And so I am digging my holes in the compost. I am reading a, a few little reminders here. And I, I just like to read the labels on all the plants and try to follow along. And what I'm doing is I do have some different varieties, but I will plant out a whole pack and I put its label with the first plant and then all the other ones down past it are the same variety until I plant another pack and start with another fresh label. Will I regret this later? We're going to find out, but I've got a little system where I pull down the different uh, flat of tomatoes with me and every couple feet here I pull out another tomato and get it planted and I do have many packs of the same varieties. We have some variations of course and so I try to just keep general varieties together and keep my little makeshift label system going and now the kitties are also gonna help inspect what I'm doing. I plan to in between these rows of determinant tomatoes to possibly do more bush beans. Now I do plan to even around these tomatoes I plan to do basil and lettuce and maybe even more carrots and radishes. I just want to keep those different things planted around the different plants. I'm trying to interplant as much as possible and making the most of all this lovely compost dirt. And we get this row all the way to the end. This is our first row going in the lasagna garden. Right. Okay, so you see, I'm working on my first row of paste tomatoes. A little over halfway done with this first row. I just remembered, I heard this this spring, and I was like, I'm so gonna do this this year when I plant my tomatoes. Somewhere, you all tell me where, I don't know. I've heard it, and I just Googled again, and I found some sources, so let's give it a shot. <laughs> but the whole idea of planting a raw egg and a banana peel with each plant. Obviously, I have not been doing that in my garden, but I wanted to try that with my tomatoes. Now we've been feeding our banana peels every day we have them, but every day we feed them to our pigs because our pigs love them as well. But we do have a whole basket of homegrown eggs, so I'm just going to try it. We have half this row without the egg. It's supposed to, you plant it down a little deeper, it's supposed to de decompose and then be a natural fertilizer for the plants. Some folks swear by it. I don't think it's going to hurt anything. So since I have the eggs, we're going to give it a try. The kitty is gardening with us. He's so very helpful. He doesn't know he's becoming a YouTube kitty. <laughs> so anyway, they like to be wherever mama's working. So for the rest of this row, we're just gonna continue it. Now, it says for these paste tomatoes for them to be 24 to 36 inches apart. So I've just been roughly eyeballing that, but I think we're doing pretty well. They definitely will need water. And so here we go. I've got my basket of eggs and I've got more tomatoes to go. Now, as I mentioned, I don't have available banana peels. That definitely would have been nice, but our pigs just, that's like one of their favorite things. And you know, we go through a lot of bananas around here. So that's how the row is looking. And now with the rest of the tomatoes, we're gonna get started planting an egg down in. 
So since filming this video several weeks ago, because you all know, mom of nine, I have to stay ahead on what I'm doing, right? Or we don't have any videos. <laughs> so anyway, since I filmed this, I have since seen our good friend Becky on Acre Homestead plant her tomatoes. And in her video, she mentioned that she breaks the egg. And I heard her say that because she has found whole eggs when the season is done. So I did not hear her say that till after mine was already planted. So if you could help me remember, that's another thing we'll remember for next year. But I definitely have my comfy gardening shoes now and they are just, uh, since we're just rolling in the compost here, these are staying by my back door and not coming back in the house. I do spray them off with the hose a couple times a week, but yeah, we just have this, uh, whole rolling in the compost experience and I am being careful as I am working my way up another row to not trample any other plants with my feet just something else I'm being aware of so I will have to move gingerly and gently here amongst the plants but future garden updates my local animal feed store local co-op building here in our small town recently had seed potatoes for five dollars for a 50 pound bag so not in this video but coming up homesteading gardening adventures we got 400 pounds i got 200 pounds of golden potatoes and 200 pounds of a red potato and we also have more compost delivered so many more adventures to come so just updating you on what's happening i have finished what I had already purchased of the paste tomatoes. I now have this variety called Mountain Fresh that's also a determinate variety. And I was just trying to get the determinate ones in a general area. I did find I had one six pack of beef steak tomatoes. And then I have two packs of these, this yellow variety called Lemon Boy. And they are both indeterminate. I did not truly grasp the difference between the determinate and the indeterminate until last year. So yay for growing, yay for learning things, right? Um, I would like to have plant those indeterminate ones along some arches or panels in this lasagna garden area. Um, all of these need watered though. So we are getting close to our time. We had a rooster situation. We had some other mama situation. So I didn't get to plant my whole hour. I've got seven minutes left, but I, I am gonna try to just get as much as I can with this mountain fresh variety, getting them in the ground. Then I'm going to hand water these and those in the pots there. And then when I go, I'm gonna leave direction for some evening watering with the sprinklers. I will check on everything when I get home uh, and maybe hand water then because hand watering or hanging out with the sprinklers is also my idea of a good time. So anyway, let's get back to planting these tomatoes. So just continuing to attempt to make the best use of my time and get these tomatoes in before I have to go out for another evening appointment with one of my kiddos. But again, in, in these small blocks of time, even seven more minutes, I just try to push through and get done what I can. And then I had built in time that I needed to get myself cleaned up to take this kiddo out. All right, friends, so my watch timer is going off. What did we accomplish today? We have two sad looking, they're very thirsty, rows of determinate tomatoes planted. Go us, we got six garden arches done. We did two raised beds with bush beans. We also got this first row of arches planted with pole beans. I think we did some more carrots, so that's good. There'll be more adventures tomorrow afternoon. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today in the garden. I promise I'm giving these tomatoes a drink right now before I clean up and go out for the evening. Yay. Thanks again so much to June's Journey for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to click the first link in the description below and download June's Journey for free.